Your calculators are, well, they're not just calculators. They're scientific calculators. Now, the main reason that they are scientific calculators is because they are built with scientific notation in mind. There's this little button that almost no one ever uses. Let me zoom in a little bit. It's just confused. I'm just going to move this thing. Okay, let's focus. Can you see this guy down here? You see that one? Right down the bottom? What does it say? Times 10. Times 10. And then there's a, an X up there, which means some power. Like say, oh, I don't know, 18, 19, negative 5, whatever you want, right? So if you press that button, for instance, let's, I'll come back out there, I'll show you. Okay, I might say 3, oops, this turned on, that help. 3, and I'm going to write that times 10, you can just see it. There, I hurry up. So because it's gone little, that next number I'm about to write, like I think I had, what was it, 18? Okay, now unhelpfully, unhelpfully, the calculator hands you back exactly what it, what you gave it. Why is that? Why does it do that? It doesn't have enough symbols here. I think like mine has 10 or 12 or something like that, but I had 18 zeros. And then I had the three out the front. Too many digits for it to handle, okay? And this is why, just on your calculator, just have a play for a second. If you multiply some big numbers, right? So if I say go, okay, have a look at this, right? So I, I don't even know what these numbers are. But these numbers are so large that if I were to write out the answer not in scientific notation, there would not be enough digits here. So what it's done is it's just in the background, magically convert it into scientific notation for us. Does that make sense? You can see there's that number that's between 1 and 10, right? And then there's the times, well, how many zeros do you want to put after this? Does that make sense? Do you see that? Now, we'll point out on this particular example, um, I mean, there's a good, I, I'm almost certain, no, I'm absolutely certain, um, that it's not like it's going to end in 15 zeros, right? It's not going to end in 15 zeros. How do I know? There are decimal points, right? So for example, suppose my answer was this, just five times 10 to the 15, right? It's gonna be five and there will be one, two, three, four, da 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 da, all the zeros there, okay? If I said, let's go another decimal place, if I go 5.5 .5 times 10 to the 15, right? I'm still gonna have a five out the front, but you see this five, see that one there? It's gonna take the place of one of the zeros, right? So we'll go five and then there'll be da 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 da, there will be 14 zeros. Now if I had 15 significant figures, then all of these decimal places are going to get multiplied by all of these zeros, and they'll be part of this really large number here. Okay? So this number doesn't necessarily mean zeros, but it tells you the size, the length of the number. Okay? All right. Now, if you have a look, turn over a page or two to exercise 2b. I wasn't able to distract you for long enough for me to actually write some questions up. But I just want you to put your eyes on... Yeah, I'll just, I'll, I'll just ask you a little On page 38, you can see there's a bit of a flow chart oh, that helps flow you chart. work out. Yeah, yes, flow charts. I love flow charts. I don't, want you to, um, I don't want you to rely on this flow chart too much. Really, all it's doing is helping you ask two questions, right? Is that number at the front between 1 and 10? Is this number over here in index notation and is it space 10, right? That's all you're looking for to make something scientific notation. And we had a look at some, some counter examples. So nouns that look like scientific notation, but they're not really. They don't have all the features we're after. So read that once, but don't draw it or don't memorize it or anything like that. You're just looking for these main features, okay? So 